The Kuwait International Airport Terminal 2 project has been planned in order to increase the available airport capacity significantly and create a new regional hub. The new terminal building will offer the highest level of comfort for passengers in an area of approximately 750,000 square meters. The building is located under a single roof with daylight ports that refract the sunbeams and allow daylight to enter inside. The roof fully extends beyond the building and ensures that the entrance plaza and the airside bridges used by the passengers to reach their planes are under the shade. The terminal building facade has been designed to be impermeable to sand and dust and is resistant to explosion. The design, reflecting the hospitality and guest hosting culture of the region, creates an elegant and unforgettable impression for arriving passengers with luggage areas surrounded by a cooling waterfall. The design also includes a new landslide access to the south. The landscaping surrounding the building consists of an emerald green oasis formed by dry planted greens and varieties specific to the desert climate, expelling the desert climate from the building. The airport capacity plans to accommodate 25 million passengers per year after the new terminal building is put into operation. The new terminal building is the main element in the expansion plan of Kuwait International Airport. The terminal building package also includes the construction of a central plant building, water tank building, security building, infrastructure tunnel, and electricity substations. The airport, which aims to be the first lead gold building of the world among passenger terminals, will also generate solar energy by combining the thermal features of the concrete construction and the solar energy panels installed over a large area on the roof. The Kuwait International Airport new terminal building has been designed by the world-renowned Foster & Partners architecture company with the Pritzker Prize. The contract for the Kuwait International Airport Terminal 2 project, which is the highest price contract that has ever been awarded to a Turkish contracting company so far and is one of the most prestigious projects in the world and is of high significance for Kuwait, was announced with a signature ceremony organized on May 30, 2016. The construction site was handed over to Limak, one of the biggest Turkish contractors, on August 28, 2016 by Kuwait Ministry of Public Works (MPW). President Rajab Tayyip Erdogan and the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah, officially inaugurated the start of heavy construction works for the Kuwait International Airport new terminal in a ceremony attended by the Crown Prince of Kuwait, the Prime Minister of Kuwait, ministers, ambassadors, businessmen, bank representatives, bureaucrats, and press from Turkey and Kuwait on the 9th of May 2017. General Enabling Permanent office, designed and built by Lemak Kuwait SPC. More than 235,000 man hours are allocated to permanent offices. The permanent offices are built on an area of 25,000 square meters. They will be used by the Directorate of General Civil Aviation, with construction being fulfilled by the Ministry of Public Works Consultants. The office consists of two main buildings occupied by the Ministry and one ancillary building as an IT test facility. After the design was completed by the contractor and approved by the Ministry, earthworks began in January 2017. The Ministry moved to the permanent offices in August 2017. The offices have an area of 10,800 square meters. The car park of the permanent offices can accommodate 180 vehicles. The building contains office spaces for more than 400 personnel. There are 14 meeting rooms, 3 video conferencing rooms, and one extremely large conference room totaling approximately 900 square meters. More than 300 workers have contributed to the construction of these offices. Offices Limak has one main and four satellite offices positioned at different sides of the construction area. Aside from Limak, subcontractors also have their own offices set up in designated areas. The total office area is around 40,000 square meters, according to the summation of designated areas. Construction activities aren't only limited to works within T2 or ancillary buildings. Some activities are performed in works or factories where protection of equipment and safety of personnel from harsh Kuwaiti weather conditions is assured. The prefabrication area totals 200,000 square meters with 36 sheds. Within this area are factories for precasts, shell cassettes, flank walls, soffit cladding, secondary roof structures, skylights, thermal aluminum spray. Steel works include cross piece welding and cutting, underside steel tied arch welds, temporary tower welding, embedding steel, secondary steel. Batching plant. There are five batching plants. Three plants have the capacity of 180 cubic meters per hour each and are used for producing ordinary concrete. Two more relatively small plants have the capacity of 125 cubic meters per hour each and are mainly used for white concrete and self-compacting concrete production. 
Monthly maximum concrete production capacity to the present time is 100,000 cubic meters. Plants operate in two shifts, with more than 20 silos. Camp. Limac Camp is built on 200,000 square meters of land, has a bed capacity of 8,000 with expansion possibilities to accommodate over 10,000 persons. Mobilization is ongoing to increase capacity. In camp, there are various entertainment opportunities for residents like football and basketball courts, cafes, an open cinema, and gym. There's a mosque, laundry facilities, 24-7 open clinic, and dining halls dispersed across camp. Earthworks. The total figures for the entire project are 3.5 million cubic meters of excavation, 2.4 million cubic meters of filling, a total of 165,000 man-hours and 110,000 machine-hours are dedicated to excavation. Earthworks. Consist of preparation, excavation, and filling. Were commenced on January 2017 and are ongoing. 210,000 man hours allocated. Excavation works are substantially completed. Backfilling works are substantially completed. For earthworks, the peak month was May 2017. Excavators and backhoes are stationed for removing soil. Loaders and bobcats are employed to transfer removed soil to trucks. Graders and compactors are used to level the surface. Foundation. Foundations for T2 project include mega footings, raft foundations, secant piles, along with pads and foundations for ancillary buildings. Raft foundations, the largest in Q8, were introduced to minimize settlement differences between columns in T2 and to provide level surfacing on irregular surfaces. The project also includes building APMs, automated people movers, and utility tunnels, UTT. APM tunnels are built for passengers to travel between future terminals. UTTs are built to shelter MEP components merging from ancillary buildings like HVAC ducts, pipes, and electrical cables to T2. Secant piles are used to provide lateral support during construction of tunnels. Head beams are employed to connect piles, and guide beams are utilized to ensure the correct alignment for secant piles is obtained. Piles placed in the APM tunnel. There are 520 reinforced and 524 unreinforced secant piles accounting for 3,000 cubic meters and 1,800 cubic meters of concrete respectively. For reinforcing piles, a sum of 710 tons of rebar is used. General foundation activities are constructing foundations, thermal protection, lean concreting, PVC insulation, screed application, reinforcing foundation, foundation concreting. More than 125,000 tons of rebar steel is used on foundations and for steel fixing of foundations alone, 580,000 man hours were invested. Rafts are built piece by piece on two levels. For the east-west face, the raft is in basement 2, while the rest of the structure rests on a raft located in basement 1. The raft below T2 consists of 209 pieces. 57 of those pieces are located in basement 2, and 152 are in basement 1. The maximum amount of raft casting at once is 5,820 cubic meters. Total amounts of 365,000 cubic meters and 105,000 cubic meters of concrete were poured for basement 1 and basement 2 respectively. The combined total of amounts of concrete for rafts is 469,000 cubic meters with 63,000 tons of steel reinforcement. Blinding bed covers 253,000 square meters. Basement 1 covers approximately 208,000 square meters, whereas Basement 2 covers 45,000 square meters. PVC sheet membrane below rafts accounts for 275,000 square meters of material. Mega column foundations are cast in such a way as to create monolithic one-body structures. These gigantic foundations delve 5.5 meters underground. UTT. Activity flow of the UTTs has a similar pattern to the activity shown above. UTTs are a combination of 128 ANOS segments based on 11 different sections. Length is 2.6 kilometers, with variations from section to section and the tunnel is 9.9 .9 meters wide. There are 22 access shafts built. Open cut excavation is applied for earthworks of UTT with adequate sloping. During construction of UTTs, segments aren't cast end to end but are staggered in order to inhibit cracking due to expansion of concrete. Mega column. Mega columns are assigned to withstand enormous loads imposed by concrete roofs including secondary steel, guttering, solar panels, and possibly increased loads due to unfavorable weather conditions. There are a total of 90 mega columns of 22 different types with height ranges from 17.4 meters to 34.2 meters, measured from raft foundation level to lower portion of diaphragm slab. Structural parts consist of sockets, precast arches, in situ walls, diaphragm slabs, stay cables and post-tensioning works, stitches, 
for each mega column in total an average of 2,330 couplers. 8 tons embedded. Socket. Sockets in the upper portion of pile foundations extend above ground level. The purpose is to resist time of lateral loads, example, wind, earthquakes, etc. And they provide grout bound slots for precast arches. Sockets reach as high as 12 meters. During the formwork phase of these sockets, steel molds are used to withstand lateral pressure from the concrete. Sockets require a total of 3,300 tons of rebar and 10,400 cubic meters of concrete. Precast arches. For this project, precast arches are employed to deal with crossing wide areas of open space and supporting concrete roofs installed with solar panels and steel skeletons. Installation of precast arches commences after completion of concrete sockets and is finalized by casting stitches between arch elements to prepare for roof works. Precast arches in the T2 project are of high strength self-compacting concrete, reinforced with rebar and additional embedded steel, and are strengthened with post-tensioning cables which lie within horizontally and vertically. There are 420 ribs and 387 spines for a total of 807 precast arches, which accounts for 66,000 cubic meters of concrete and 21,000 tons of reinforcing steel where a single arch has an approximate mass of 300 tons. By comparison, a Concorde has a maximum takeoff weight of 185 tons. Production of precast arches requires 1850 man hours of work and fabrication is done in 10 factories, one of which is used for cut and bend purposes. At its peak, 740 blue and white color personnel have worked in precast arch factories per day manufacturing 3 pieces on average, with 6 being the highest number of pieces produced in a day. The first precast arch was made on 7th of April 2018 and mass production began in May 2018 and ended on 30th of October 2019. In situ walls. In situ walls are located in the center of mega columns. The purpose is to brace precast arch segments facing four directions against vertical loads, to provide access for personal and other MEP components to reach the roof through shafts, providing rest for diaphragm slab which will transfer forces exerted by diaphragm slab to foundation. In situ walls are reinforced concrete structures made with a total of 19,100 cubic meters of concrete. 8,700 tons of rebar and casting complete in situ walls for one mega column requires about 675 man hours per stage. Diaphragm slab. Diaphragm slabs are located above in situ walls and are used to provide bases for guttering and catwalk secondary steel structures, rests for hanger frames in the dome, and bracing precast arches to restrain their movement against each other under horizontal forces. There are 14 different types of diaphragm slabs from a total number of 15,200 cubic meters of concrete, 3,150 tons of rebar, with one diaphragm slab requiring about 1,130 man hours of work. To cast one diaphragm slab requires construction of in situ walls, post tensioning of precast arches, and completion of grouting. Then, scaffolding used for construction of in situ walls is widened and elevated even higher to provide a base for formwork of the diaphragm slab. At this point, elevation of scaffolding for the highest axis surpasses 26 meters. The formwork of the diaphragm slab is placed on protracted scaffolding. Rebars are installed in coordination with couplers, embedded elements, and welding works. Concrete injected into the ground is transported to diaphragm slab level with the assistance of mobile pumps. Stay cable, post-tensioning works. Stay cables are introduced in mega columns to counteract weights of precast arches. There are four stay cable layout variations for 126 stay cables in total. Other than stay cables, post-tensioning PT methods are applied throughout parts of the inner mega column. Up until November 2019, over 147,000 man hours were dedicated to stay cabling and post-tensioning work. Activities for stay cabling and post-tensioning works are Installation of stay cable anchorages Preparation of stay cable pipe Stay pipe installation Strands installation Strands stressing for stay cabling and post tensioning work, materials used are 7 wire strands for stay cabling, 22 wire strands for post tensioning, and these strands are designed to endure stresses up to 1860 MPa. Anchorage and tension rings to prevent strands from skidding. Equipment used in electro hydromechanical pumps to supply necessary force to pull strands and stay cable jacks to apply force on strands. Stitches Stitches are concrete elements used to connect precast arches. There are two types of stitches named according to their positions. Wet stitches are used for bonding precast arches in the same column. Central stitches are used to bond precast arch stems from different mega columns. There are a total of 381 wet stitches and 48 central stitches. 
Until now, around 1,800 cubic meters of concrete has been used for stitches. Aside from rebar coming from the ribs, around 11.5 tons of additional rebar is used for one central stitch. Inner structure. Column. There are a total of 6,300 columns dispersed throughout T2, utilizing around 26,000 cubic meters of concrete and 4,500 tons of reinforcement steel. There are four main column variations in six shapes and two color configurations. These variations have emerged from structural and aesthetic necessities. They are circular, ellipse, rectangular, and encased columns. Encased columns are mostly utilized in the BHS area. The reason they are called encased is because the columns have I-shaped steel beams inside concrete. Dimensions of columns are approximately 700 mm by 700 mm with an average volume of 3.9 cubic meters and a maximum volume of 11.2 cubic meters. For columns, more than 14,000 cubic meters of concrete is cast. More than 1,400 tons of reinforcement steel is fixed. Over 37,000 man hours are dedicated. Slab. Slab is the main structural heavy section of the T2 project and according to location and which floor there can be thickness differences. In the terminal, two main slab types are used, one of which is concrete, suspended, and the other is decking slab which is composite, concrete and steel. The total slab area is around 510,000 square meters. Total concrete slab area is around 410,000 square meters and total deck slab area is around 100,000 square meters. 14 slab types are located in the terminal and the thickness changes according to location from between 200 mm to 1400 mm. In suspended slab casting, two types of formwork are used, which are plastic and styrofoam. Casting of one square meter slab requires eight man hours of effort. Up to November 2019, a 196,500 square meter slab area has been cast. More than 16,000 tons of reinforcement have been fixed and more than 90,000 cubic meters of formwork have been installed. Baggage Handling System Area Structure The Baggage Handling System Area, which is referred to as BHS, has a big role in the terminal project regarding distributing and collecting of baggage and is therefore located in the Ticket Desk Area, which is in between the East 12, West 12 axis. BH Area Structure, which is a composite structure consisting of BHS steel beam, steel encased columns, girders, truss structures and decking slabs. The total BHS decking area is around 40,000 square meters at plus 4, plus 8, plus 12 levels. In the BHS decking slab, 16 mm trapezoidal is used to create floor areas. Total BHS area steel is around 24,000 tons which comprises beams, trusses, columns and girders. Total BHS trusses are around 6,651 tons. One truss section is around 20 tons. BHS secondary beam is 3,466 tons, and case columns and girders, 13,101 tons. Up until November 2019, 6,076 tons of BHS trusses, 1,590 tons BHS secondary beams, 12,829 tons of girders and encased columns, and 4,574 square meter trapezoidal decks have been installed. Temporary works. Temporary tower. Temporary tower is a steel structure for carrying precast structural elements, rib, spine elements, for roof structures prior to stressing work completion. There are 711 towers in terminal of five different types. Each tower has three sections, namely base module, standard inner module, and top module. The maximum tower top module weight is 60 tons. All other standard base modules are 20 tons, which are handled or lifted by either tower or module crane on site. Total weight of TT is around 45,000 tons. Production of TT requires 110 man hours. Fabrication takes place in four factories. Additionally, five different suppliers are producing these temporary towers outside of the terminal in places such as Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and so on. November 2019, 652 out of 711 TT have been installed. Under slug steel tied arch. For this project, USTA is employed to overcome temporary steel structure for carrying steel roof structure with concrete roof elements, shell cassettes. USTA creates the opportunity to work simultaneously in construction areas such as the inner structure, architectural finishing works, MEP works, and roof structure works. After completion of concrete roof installation and post tensioning in consecutive bays, we can dismantle the USTA. There are 963 USTA in the terminal. The total weight of USTA and hangars is around 45,000 tons. Installation requires around 1,000 man hours. 
Fabrication is held in two of the terminal factories. First, USTA manufacturing commenced in March 2019. By the end of November 2019, 116 out of the 963 USTA had been installed. 54 USTA installed in the West Pier, 40 in the North Pier, and 22 in the East Pier. Installation cycle and equipment consists of hanger frame installation over precast elements, ribs and spine. USTA trusses are being assembled at locations from where they need to be lifted from. Tilting from horizontal positions will be performed by cranes through sling locations at USTA trusses. Lifting of USTA truss with crawler crane, 600 tons to 1,600 tons. Connecting to hangers and supports by welding and bolt connection. Tie tensioning to finally have USTA loaded to long truck to have USTA erected in place. Precast works, shell cassettes. Shell cassettes are composite precast elements of steel plate and concrete for roof structure. Each shell cassette has a unique shape and color, therefore each piece has different geometry and weight. High strength, vibration compacting white concrete is used to produce shell cassettes. There are 36,964 shell cassettes. One shell cassette incorporates around 0.8 cubic meters of concrete, 250 to 300 kilograms of steel rebar, and four shell plates which are around 400 kilograms. Therefore, one shell cassette is around 4 to 5 tons. Total volume of shell cassette is 45,149 cubic meters. Total weight of side plate is 29,571 tons. Number of side plates is 147,856. Cross pieces are 20,965 tons. Number of cross pieces are 41,930. One shell cassette is around 3 meters by 3 meters, 9 square meters. Total area of shell cassettes is around 282,179 square meters. Each shell cassette is unique. Because of the terminal design, three pieces are the same for east, west, and north piers. Production of shell cassettes requires nearly 100 man hours. Fabrication is held in nine factories five of which are used for cutting and bending and assembly purposes. Peak daily production rate was 100 shell cassettes on average and the highest number of cassettes produced in a day was 127. The first shell cassette was produced on the 28th of November 2018 and mass production began in December 2018. Until 20th of November 2019, 16,980 out of 36,964 shell cassettes have been cast. 2,985 out of the 36,964 shell cassettes have been installed. Production cycle and equipment consists of cutting of shell cassettes side plate, cruciform production, thermal spray aluminum painting, TSA, for protection of steel plate, 3x3 shell cassette assembly and welding of rebar support plates, shell cassette rebar assembly with help of gantry and overhead cranes, arrangement of adaptive mold, shell casing casting, curing and pre-storage, sandblasting to clean surface of shell cassette, water repellent chemical application, short-term storage at installation location or stockyard. Installation cycle and equipment. Stored shell cassette is transported to factories and combined with bolt connection 3x3 or 2x1. Combined and lifted shell cassette is transported to erection location with SPMT or trucks. It is erected on location with crawler cranes and special tools and bolt connected. Flank wall. Frank walls are a special precast element used exclusively on T2. They are a composite comprised of outer steel plates, steel rebar, and white concrete with a unique shape and color. Flank walls are installed using special steel molds produced solely for this project. Mega column and flank walls are bound with concrete. There are 7,650 flank walls. One flank wall comprises around 0.8 to 1 cubic meter of concrete, 250 to 300 kilograms of reinforcement steel. Production requires 100 man-hours of work. Fabrication is in nine factories, five of which are used for cutting and bending and assembly purposes. Peak daily production rate was 20 on average, and the highest number produced on a day was 47. The first flank wall was made on the 18th of March 2019, and mass production began in April 2019. Installation cycle and equipment consists of sandblasted water repellent flank wall transported to site, special installation flank wall mold arranged according to position, flank wall connected to embeds, Flank wall mold supported except axis 2, 3, 4, 5. In between flank wall and in situ wall gap closed with 36 cm concrete. Completion of installation. Bullnose. For this project, a bullnose is employed to satisfy a challenging agenda. Basically, white concrete precast nose pieces are intended for connection of roof cladding and roof structure. 
giving the airport some aesthetic sense in terms of uniformity, color, and texture of all cladding. Nose pieces are connected by steel structures to cornices. There are 569 bullnose pieces. Total concrete quantity is 2,179 cubic meters in terms of volume. Fabrication is held in three factories, one of which is for cutting and bending and assembly purposes. Production cycle and equipment consists of production of jigs, rebars, embeds, and bending, curving, and cutting machines. Arrangement of mold, installation of rebars, checking mold and cleaning of base plate, release agent application and space replacement, placement of rebar structure and embedded items, casting and curing of concrete, demolding, transporting, and storing in field yard, checking of finished elements, soffit cladding, White concrete soffit cladding pieces are the main architectural concrete precast ribbon spine gaps between two flank walls and to give a homogeneous view architecturally. Soffit claddings are connected to precast elements, rib and spine, narrow faces. There are 3,820 spine, 3,049 rib, and 468 tapered panels with a total of 7,337 soffit claddings. Production of soffit cladding requires 50 man hours. Fabrication is held in three factories, one of which is used for cutting and bending and assembly purposes. A total of 26 spine cladding and 23 rib cladding formworks with 49 soffit cladding molds are used. 16 molds for factory 4, 15 for factory 5, and 18 for factory 6. Peak daily production rate was 18 soffit claddings on average, with the highest number produced in a day being 33. The first soffit cladding was produced on 13th of September 2019, and mass production began in November 2019. Secondary roof structure. Secondary roof structure consists of secondary roof structure columns, main beams, secondary beams, and bracings. Gutters in secondary roof structure. Air intake structure, thermal wall structure, secondary edge structure. Design. There is a total weight of secondary steel structure of 17,000 tons. Fabrication is held in five factories, one of them for center and edge trusses, and one for secondary columns, main beams, secondary beams, and bracings. Production cycle and equipment consists of model extraction, preparation of production plan drawings, cutting of steel plates, tube, section steel, other pieces by automated cutter machines, welding of steel, coatings, painting of prepared steel structure, transportation to designated stockyard areas. Secondary steel erections. Every secondary beam shall be connected to cross pieces which are connected to columns. In turn, those beams are connected to each E-shape assembly between them. Secondary direction horizontal elements will be lifted with one free end, suspended on E-shaped ground assembled module, where possible. The other end will be pulled with less vertical lifting equipment usage. Air intake, gutters, thermal walls and truss erection is planned to be done parallel to secondary steel column and beam erection. Facade The facade is an outer wall of the terminal that forms the steel skeleton to accommodate windows. In entrance areas, an explosion facade is designed to withstand unexpected loads like ones arising from bomb blast situations. Naturally, bomb blast facades require more material and are three times heavier than normal facades. This consists of ring beams, glass, and louvers. A ring beam is a semicircle shaped main structure under a spine of concrete precast elements. A transom is a beam of steel. A mullion is a column in the facade structure. Louvers are oblique metal sheets in front of glass to admit light and air while keeping out rain and direct sunshine. In addition, the facade system utilizes roller blinds, motor control system, and BMU, building maintenance units. There are 17 bomb blast and 61 non-bomb blast facades totaling 78 facades. A bomb blast area is located in between WE05 and EW05. As of the end of 2019, the project's physical completion has reached more than 40% considering design procurement and construction. The Kuwait International Airport New Terminal Building will transform Kuwait into one of the world's leading countries in public aviation, being an exceptional landmark and symbolic entrance gate to the country. Ancillary Buildings Facilities The Kuwait International Airport Terminal 2 project scope also included construction of ancillary buildings, facilities, which consists of five different types of buildings. These are the Central Plant Building, Water Tank Building, Utility Tunnel and Goods Lift Building, and Switching Substations 1 and 2. The ancillary buildings have a vital role in the project to supply power and air conditioning to the Terminal Building T2. Central Plant Building For this project, 
The central plant building is the key area which will provide the chilled water supply to the terminal building. The central plant building is a composite building which has a basement and two floors with large span steel girders and secondary beams on the roof. The covered area of the building is 27,000 square meters. The central plant facility building is the heart of the HVAC system for all the buildings under the scope, producing and providing chilled water to all buildings. The total chilled water capacity sums up to 85 megawatts. The CPB surface area is around 9,500 square meters, and it has 20 cooling towers, 20 chillers, 17 air handling units, 19,000 meters of steel pipe, and 26 dry type transformers. It has its own diesel generator and fuel tanks for backup power. Primary pumps deliver chilled water from chillers to the terminal building through utility tunnels at the west and east piers, and secondary pumps draw the water from the system and pump it back to the chillers. Integrated automation and control systems. The central BMS system shall be provided to monitor and control the mechanical, electrical, security, fire protection, and the building environmental systems. It is important to maintain standalone capabilities for the fire protection system. As such, the fire alarm system shall have a separate fire alarm panel which will interact with the overall automation system. Substations shall be provided for local monitoring and or control of the different elements of the electromechanical services. The substation shall incorporate the digital direct control techniques and shall be able to operate in a standalone mode even in the case of communication failure with the central computer. Water Tank Building The water tank building is used to store water for the chilled water supply for the terminal building and also supply the wet sprinkler system in the terminal building. The WTB covered area is around 3,000 square meters and it has five GRP water tanks with a total capacity of 6,200 cubic meters and a reverse osmosis system is equipped for water filtration. Utility tunnel and goods lift building. The utility tunnel is a 2.6 kilometer underground tunnel with a 7.5 meter clear width that connects the mechanical and electrical systems from the central plant building and water tank building, cooling, heating pipes, domestic water pipes, HVAC ducts, etc. to Terminal 2. The goods lift building which is used to transfer materials to the utility tunnel has an elevator system. It is located on the opposite side of the central plant building. The utility tunnel is divided into two major zones called east and west. Over a million cubic meters excavated. 35,000 equipment hours consumed for the excavation, 77,000 cubic meters of filling, 16,712 meters of steel pipe, 230 tons of steel frames supports. Switching Substation 1 and 2 The switching substation buildings are the power supply and distribution center of the terminal and ancillary buildings. These buildings consist of three main buildings and one fuel tank with electrical and mechanical systems. In the Kuwait International Airport T2 project, there are two switching substation buildings. One of them is located on one side of the central plant building and the other is located on the south side of the terminal building. These buildings have their own fuel tanks to supply the system. Each 11 kV switching substation building has been equipped with diesel generators and liquid fuel distribution systems to supply the backup power for the terminal and ancillary buildings. To maintain reliability of supply, Double bus bar systems provide sufficient flexibility to either distribute connected outgoing lines to two bus bars or transfer loads from one to the other under the full load and fault condition. This arrangement ensures that the whole system will not be down for maintenance.